In order to understand the current land administration of Wolkite's geographical boundary, we must dive into the history of the region starting around 1700 years ago. By investigating the history of Wolkite, we can fully grasp the illegal border delimitation of the TPLF that started around 1989 by placing the districts of Wolkite, Tagade, Talemt, and Humara under Tigray's jurisdiction. Wolkait is situated in northwestern Ethiopia and is bordered by the areas of Tagade, Talemt, and Humara. Historically, Ethiopia's provinces have altered in power due to political shifts. Yet, these four areas have been part of the provinces of Begimidir and Simein, or even their own independent provinces. These two provinces were further merged into the province of Gondar. As of right now, the Gondar province has again further been incorporated into the current administrative region of Amara. Bordering Gondar is the Tekeze River, which is a natural border that divides Gondar from the province of Tigray. These provinces were administrated individually with the provinces of Begimidir and Semein, or Gondar, being part of the Amara people and Tigray for the Tigrayan people. That has always remained consistent over northwestern Ethiopia's history. In his book titled The Wolkait Affairs, Ato Acham Yalle Tamru has broadly assessed the administrative boundaries of Wolkait, Tagare, Talemt, and Humara during the Aksumite Empire, which was centered in Tigray. Emperor Izana, who ruled Ethiopia from 320 AD to 360 AD, inscribed detailed administrative and boundary demarcations of Ethiopia. In one of the inscriptions, Izana stated that the tribe of Wolkait, located across the Tekeze River, has agreed to pay tribute and homage to the emperor without waging war. Thus illustrating that during the reign of Izana, Wolkait was not under the jurisdiction of the center of Aksum's empire, i.e. Tigray, but was its own distinct province. When assessing the main documents during the Aksumite empire, they all attest that the territory across the Tekeze is the current day land of the Amaras. Starting from the middle of the 9th century, Judith, also known as Gudit or Yodit, usurped the scepter of power from the Aksumites. After examining the chronicles written in the days of Judith, Tesfa Haptamariam in his book written in 1951 states that after 849 AD, the capital of the Ethiopian government was relocated from the Tigray region to the Amara region across the Tegeze. By the end of the 9th century, Tegeze remained the border between Amara and Tigray. Emperor Amdetsion ruled Ethiopia from 1314 to 1344, and his royal chronicles describe in detail the territories he ruled. The emperor's chronicles state that the Tekeze River serves as a boundary between the territories of Tigray and Beggemedir slash Simein, thus a clear distinction between the Tigrayan and Amara people's provinces. <laughs> In addition to Amdetsion's chronicles, there is further evidence regarding the border delimitation during the reign of Emperor Zere Yaqob, who ruled from 1434 to 1468. During his reign, the Nibruid of Aksum, who was the head priest in the Tigray province, wrote that the Tekeze River bordered Tigray on the west. In other words, meaning that the jurisdiction of the Tigray province does not cross over the Tekeze River. Pedro Paez, a Spaniard who lived in Ethiopia from 1603 to 1622 and a close advisor slash confident to Emperor Susunios, listed the Ethiopian boundaries of his time. Pais wrote that the Wolkait, Tagade, Talemt, and Humara territories were administered as lands of the Amara people, not the Tigrayans. Around that same period, a tutelage to Pedro Pais named Manuel Baradas visited the province of Tigray and resided there for nine years. He states in his book written in 1634 that Tigray is located at the southern end of the Red Sea to the west bounded by the Tekeze River. It is clearly stated once again 
that the Tekeze River is the western boundary of Tigray and not the territories of Walqait Agade, Talimt, or Humara. Emmanuel Yochiziga. Late in Yom Saida Dragum, Besatu, Ethiopian Ligova Nubama to Besat, Liat or Nubama to Besat, Yaganut Marajas of Swo, Nehis Afutin. During the reign of Emperor Yostos from 1711 to 1716, his chronicles refer to the opening ceremony of the Lidata Mariam Church in Gondar. Male and female nobility who came across the Tekeze from Tigray were singing in their own traditional way, while the Amara nobility rejoiced in their own cultural songs. This further iterates how the Tigray people were not in the Gondar province of Amaras, but came across the Tekeze from Tigray. James Bruce, a citizen of Scotland who ventured to Ethiopia, wrote five volumes called Travels to Discover the Source of the Nile. Bruce, who came to Ethiopia in the 18th century, has noted in his memoirs descriptively where and when he explored Ethiopia. During his stay, Bruce described the state of Tigray and its boundaries. He described the Merab River, also known presently as the border of modern-day Eritrea, as the border to the north, and the Tekeze River as the border to the west of Tigray. He further reiterated that between the river Tekeze and the Nile westward, is Amara. Between the river Tekeze and Nile westward is Amara. Below me, as come to. So, lazy. It is growing now. Yeah, Amara. What's that? Tekeze in the hand. I'm as come to. It is growing. Growing. During Bruce's visit, he encountered the ruler of the Tigray province named Ras Mikhail Soul. Bruce was given access to copy numerous books, which included one from Aksum detailing the districts of the Tigray province. Nowhere in that map is the mention of Walqait, Tagade, Talemt, or Humara as being administered by Tigray. ባስራስምንተኛው <laughs> Additional historical evidence from Tigray can be found from Ras Walde Selassie, who ruled Tigray from 1788 to 1816. Ras Gugsa of Beg one of the main provincial warlords at the time, sought to mobilize the other provincial rulers. He ended up mobilizing the rulers of Gwajam, Yajju, and Begge Midir. In addition, Gugsa wanted to mobilize Tigray. Yet upon hearing this, Ras Wardesillase wrote a letter to Ras Gugsa. As ruler of Tigray, he wrote, Neither you nor your predecessors have ever controlled Tigray. I want to remind you that crossing the Tekeze River to invade Tigray is unthinkable. The testimony of this former Tigrayan ruler clearly asserts that Tigray was indeed located across the Tekeze. Tigrayan 
Major Harris, who sought diplomatic relations on behalf of the British Empire, visited and described Ethiopia's borders in 1846. He stated that the state of Amara stretches from the Tekeze to the Sudanese border and to the Nile. <laughs> During the rule of Emperor Theodros II in 1867, an English colonel who came to Ethiopia wrote about the different kingdoms and provinces of Ethiopia. He lists them as the following. The other kingdoms, Tigray, Bagimidir, Gwajam, Beit Amara, and the provinces of Simein, Agade, and Wolkait. Thus drawing a distinction between the kingdom of Tigray and the areas of Wolkait and Tagade. In 1871, Emperor Tekle Gyurgis II of Lasta slash Wag and Dejazmach Kasa of Tigray, who later became Emperor Johannes IV, went to battle in Adwa, Tigray. Dejazmach Kasa came out victorious and issued a proclamation regarding the captured soldiers who came from Begimidir and Simein. The proclamation directed the captured soldiers as follows and confirms that Tegeze was the border between Amara and Tigray. From now on, quickly cross the Tekeze River into Simein slash Begimidir and disappear from your enemies who are from Tigray. During the reign of Emperor Johannes IV, there was a book written by Professor Alice in 1880. The book was entitled The Earth and Its Inhabitants. In the book, Alice stated that the Amara government provinces are Dumbia, Chilga, Begimidir, Guna, Wagara, Talamt, Waldeba, and Wolkait. Therefore, even during the time of Emperor Johannes IV, it is clear that these areas, namely Wolkait, Tagade, Talamt, and Humara, were part of what we call now the Amara region. In 1872, Emperor Johannes IV set out to reclaim the land across the Tekeze. At this time, there was a certain lord of the Amara people named Raswarinya. He was an ally of Emperor Johannes IV against the previous emperor, Teklegurgis II. For his cooperation, Raswarinya was made governor of Simein, Wolkait, Tagade, Gondel, Dembia, and Begimidr. Unfortunately, in 1873, Raswarinya revolted against Emperor Johannes IV, and as a result, the emperor mobilized his army to Gondel. Without a shot being fired, Raswarinya was surrounded and surrendered to Emperor Johannes IV. As mentioned earlier, there was a province called Simein. There is a natural border of a valley called Bambilo, located 30 kilometers north of the city of Gondar. The starting of this valley up to the Tegazi River was defined as the political geographical boundary of Simein. In the administrative category, all the Ethiopian monarchs appointed an administrator saying Bambilo Befesis Tekeze Bemeles, highlighting the administrative boundaries. Bambilo Befesis Tekeze Bemeles literally means from Bambilo to the shores of the Tekeze River. Before the conquest of Emperor Johannes, Raswarinya was governing the region from Bambilo Befesis Tekeze Bemeles. When looking at Johannes IV's letter to Sizek, the French consulate at Metsua Eritrea, he went on to say Raswarinya's people of Wolkait Tagade and the rest of the Amara people have paid tribute to me. After the reign of Emperor Johannes IV, Emperor Menelik II ascended to the throne in 1889 he decided to appoint an Amara noble to their ancestral land of Bambilo Befesis Tegkaze Bemeles. A man by the name of Gabriel Selassie, the minister of the pen, wrote that the Amara nobility was in full agreement with the decision. During Emperor Menelik II's reign, there was a determined effort to unite Ethiopia and create a great and prosperous country. As a result, numerous provinces and regions changed administrative hands, but what remained consistent was that the Tekeze River was the border between the Amara and the Tigray region. Amara 
ብዙ መዛግብ ታሉ ማለት ነው። After Menelik II, there were the rulers of Lygiasu and Empress Zoditu. Yet no significant administration changes occurred in northwestern Ethiopia. The last emperor, Haile Selassie, who ruled from 1930 to 1974, finally consolidated the areas of Begimidir, Simin, and Dembia into one province taking the name of Begimidir. This province was always referred to as Amara land. In addition, there is a large body of evidence such as identification cards, receipts, and letters exchanged between officials, all of which assert that the land of Walqait, Agade, Humara, and Talmint were all administered as part of the Amara region. Look at this receipt. This receipt of 17 bird that our grandfather paid for the Walqait, Agade, Gonda Road Relief Society. His name was Reverend Gabriel Xavier. Formerly, his area was called Setit Humara. The road was from Setit to Tsagare. Setit Humara was part of Gondar, part of the Amhara administration. It was beautiful. Since the 1930s, the Walkait Amaras in their territory on the side of the Tekazi River had successfully begun modern farming by clearing forests, cutting down bushes, and fighting wild animals. Before I was born, this area was a jungle. It was a huge desert. But our ancestors came to Humara and raised oxen. The land that the city of Humara now sits on was the home to elephants and lions. Our ancestors were plowing with oxen. Wild lions were attacking their oxen whenever they got a chance. There was a tree called Kumar. Our forefathers spent the night on a bed they built on the Kumar tree to protect themselves. That Kumar tree became their home. In fact, the name Kumara was derived from the Kumar tree. Did you say the name Humara came from the Kumar tree? Yes. Then the place started growing slowly. I believe mechanized farming started in Humara around 1943 or 1946. Did mechanized farming start here? Yes, mechanized farming started here. This was the first in Ethiopian history? Yes, Humara was the first area in Ethiopian history and also it introduced the sesame seed. Who were the people that were farming during that time? People that were farming during that time included Fitawarari Sarreba, Fitawarari Yeshiwandam, Dajazmach Golla, and Grazmach Mheret Mekonnen. There were many. Most were Dajazmach. This is the land of Amhara. This is their land. In fact, what makes Walkait unique is not only the pioneering mechanized agriculture, but also the fertile land of Walkait and Tagade. Its uniqueness made it the best site to start mechanized farming, and thus the indigenous people were also economically better off. Many people from Eritrea, Tigray, Gondar, and Gwajam used to come for farm work in the Walkai, Tagade, and Humara areas. During that time, there was better development in these areas that attracted people from these various regions. The high administration at that time was the governor of Begemidir and the Simain provinces centered in the provincial capital of Gondar. District governors also lived in the towns of Humera, Walkait, Agade, and Dawat. As official letters written during those times indicated, for the regions of Walkait, Agade, and Humera, Dabat was the central administration location, while for the Simeon region, Dabark city was the center. Humera, Walkait, and Agade, Dabat, Katama, Hunugin, yeah. Dabat Auraja in the Neber, Yisamin de Gumo, Dabarka Katama Hono, Nagarganska, Alam Tendras in the Neber, he is as a fortune of the Buch, the Giltsaya. We are now on the Tekeze Bridge in the town of Humera. This is the bridge that connects Humara and Eritrea. 
የሚያዋስለነ በጻሃይ መውጫ ወደ ዋልድባጥ ግ ያዋስለናል የሚያዋስለነ ይሄ ወንዝህ ነው ይሄ ወንዝህ ከላይ ከላሊበላ ስር ጀምሮ ነው የሚመጣ ከላይ ከፍስል ከትግራይ ጋር ማን ነው የሚያዋስል ጸለምት ላይ አላይ አዎ ላይ ጸለምትና ትግራይን ያዋስናል ይወርድና ከጸለምት ቀጥሎ ዋልድባ ገዳሙን ያዋስንና ከዛ ያለ ዋልድባ መሬቱን ከቀረሰ በኋላ ወደ ወልቃይት መሬት ይመጣል ይሁን እዚህ ይሁን ዝራሱ አዎ ማዶ ማን ያዋስናል ትግራይ ወደዚህ ያማራ መሬት Tehna We set off from Humara to Adigoshu to see the land that TPLF illegally annexed in the 1980s killing and uprooting many lives Large farms are visible in the area the landscape appears as a combination of varying land features From Humara, we are now on our way to Adigoshu to see where the natural borders of Tigray and Wolkait are. In the past for more than a thousand years, during the reigns of Emperor Izana, Emperor Amdetsion, Emperor Zerayakob, Emperor Susunios, Emperor Theodros, Emperor Teklegiorgis II, Emperor Johannes IV, Emperor Menelik II, Digiyasu, Empress Zodi II, Emperor Haile Selassie I, and Derg The Tekezi River has always been the border demarcation between the Amara and the Tigrayans. Where are we now? This is called the Tekezi River. This is the main border between Walqait and Tigray, which is the border between Tigray and Amhara. Walqait was in the Dabat district of Gondar state. The sub district was Birkuta. This is rich historical evidence. Ehe demo mitayo tekeze no. Ehe amba Birkuta bemikitil neber mitaladro ba hayisla sidro jemro malatno. Na ahon ehe ehe mengize mamara no iyan tigray no. Ehe tefotro haftachil mitayo tekeze mibalo tefotro yiwosel no ehe. Maiqayer maigefa manum maigefa betarik mayirasa tarik yallo ehe no. Starting from here, if you look slightly north, it is the Eritrean border. Our border with Tigray is 70 to 80 kilometers. When you look north from here, you see Talamt. Waldaba Monastery is also close by, which is only about 70 kilometers away from where we are. We are now 125 kilometers from Humara, past Adigoshu at the Takaze River. For the past 1600 years, the Takaze River has been the dividing line between Tigray and Amara. More importantly, in his book, The Walqait Case, Achamel Letamru has authored a study on the boundaries and administration of Walqait, Tagade, Talamt, and Humara. Regarding the border between Tigray and Amara, The study states that the Takaze River was the natural border between Amara and Tigray from 320 AD to 1991 AD. Throughout the passage of time for thousands of years, the Takaze existed yesterday as it is today. It continues to plow the land mass of Walqait despite efforts to change the course of the river. The place we are standing on now is called the Takaze. When you look at it, the landscape itself is different. 
The land of Walqait is known as the land of the Amara. It is a fertile land, but the land on the other side of the Takazi River is dry. It has nothing. You can see that it looks different in its natural landscape. The land across the Takazi and the Walqait side are different in nature. Soil types also vary. And when TPLF started crossing into Walqait, its intention was to invade and take this fertile land. There is no other reason, and they knew it. They knew very well that it was the land of the Amara. They wanted to take the land and make it a part of Tigray. This is the obvious truth that everyone knows. <laughs> We are now 52 kilometers from the town of Adiramitz and at the Takazi Bridge. This is the second Takazi Bridge that connects to Tigray. We've seen the first one on Adi Goshu and the second one on Adiramitz. Takazi is not just a river, but also serves as the natural border between Tigray and Amara. From Tukhazi at Adi Remitz, we are now heading west to Walqait. We descended the rugged mountains of Kaftal and crossed the uncultivated plain fields of Lugudi. We continued on our way along the asphalt road adjacent to Sudan. By forcefully uprooting the people of Walqait from their ancestral domain, the TPLF realized its dream of controlling a vast, fertile land. The community that pioneered Ethiopia's modern agriculture was robbed of its identity. I am now at the end of Lungudi, which is next to the border of Sudan. Despite the change of emperors and regimes, the vast fertile land from Saroka to the border of Sudan has never been been part of Tigray. However, since the TPLF came to power in 1991, it has confiscated this large piece of land from the Gwondar state and illegally annexed it as part of Tigray. A field is spread out like a carpet in the area of Lungudi, with a vast landmass as far as the eye can see. From Dansha to Sudan, the land looks primed for agriculture. The past generation knows well the boundaries of Amara and Tigray. There are thousands who can attest to this fact. Despite TPLF's best efforts to deny the truth, it cannot erase this historical fact. <laughs> Mr. Kasai Balai, who is displaced by TPLF, states, We have studied our history since birth, and we have a full understanding of the borders of our ancestral lands based on first-hand witness accounts of our forefathers. This is what we know from our history, that the Tagare district and the district of Wolkait were in Dabat County, which is in the province of Gondar, and has been ruled by Amaras during the reign of past emperors including as recently as our own generation. An elderly local resident's testimony states, during the Haile Selassie and Derg regimes, this area of Walqait Agade and Alamt, located between the Takaze and the Sudan border, has been part of the Amara province of Begimidir, with its capital at Gondar. Atobayu Bazab, a parliamentary member during Haile Selassie's reign, states, When I was a member of parliament representing Gondar and later as a judge in Tigray, the boundary of Gondar and Tigray was the Takaze River until TPLF forcefully took over the government. Tigray never had authority beyond Tekaze, and Gondar did not have authority across Tekaze either. 
During Haile Selassie's reign, the governor of Tigray used to be Prince Mangasha Siyum, and the governors of Gondar province were Colonel Tamrat Yigudu and General Degga Tegenye. And neither of them ruled beyond the Tekezi. <laughs> Historian Achami Yelle Tamaru states, Predating 1991, all the historical sources in Ethiopia for the last 1660 years show that the natural border between Tigray and Amara is the Tekeze River. You will not find any Tigrayan noblemen ruling across the Tekeze. So the absence of Tigray rulers here means that the route is not there. And the historical boundary between Tigray and Amara has been the Tekeze River. <laughs> Colonel Demak Azodu, chair of the Wolkite Committee for the Return of Wolkite to Amara, states Since the governor of Tigray, Prince Mangasha Siu, married the granddaughter of Emperor Haile Selassie, he asked the emperor for a favor to give him land in Wolkait. During that time, Dejaz Mach Adani was the governor of Wolkait in Tagadi. It was a well-known fact that he was a war hero who did not negotiate the boundaries of his rule. Since Haile Selassie knew that fact, he told the prince not to ask him for such a favor ever again. Atobayu Bazab also states, there was no other border of Tigray in the Haile Selassie government because the permanent border is Tekeze. Even during the reign of TPLF, Prince Mangasha Siyum of Tigray has confirmed that he never governed across Tekeze. I used to be a member of Haile Selassie's parliament. During that time, there was never such a question of the Tigray border extending across the Tekeze. <laughs> But this fact did not mean anything to TPLF, who was blinded by Tigrayan supremacy. Filled with a blind hatred of the Amara people, TPLF removed the historical boundaries and administration limits when it took over the government in 1991. It created a new map where Walkait, Agade, Humara, and Alamt were annexed to Tigray. The natives of Walkait were deliberately removed from any investment activities and their properties were confiscated by any means necessary. Atawaratau Azanau, a Walkait return to Amara committee member, states During Haile Selassie's reign, Wolkait Amaras were one of the richest in Ethiopia. Why? Because the Wolkait business people used to generate significant capital from their fertile land. Humara used to be a modern city. Our forefathers used to say we can have breakfast in Asmara Eritrea and lunch in Addis Ababa because they were able to lease a charter plane and fly to Asmara then Addis Ababa. They used to be extraordinarily rich. But now TPLF robbed the wealth of the natives and condemned them to poverty and illiteracy. Habitam Akawabi Winum Nabaru Mahabarasev Nuariu Habitam Yemi Bali Yenabara Bat Wokana in a baro. The nineteen ninety one regime change allowed TPLF to become the new ruler of Ethiopia. Using its authority, TPLF forcefully annexed Walkait 
agade humara and alamt from the amara administration worqa yetegele na metawrechu te wore bezer injeraw lay wata wotu la yamer Colonel Demak Azodu states, at that time, Setit Humara used to have over 1,500 tractors and was the first community to use mechanized farming. Openly or secretly, the first thing TPLF did was to take steps to impoverish the Wolkai community by taking away the wealth and self-worth of the community. TPLF did that without any regard to the law of the land. TPLF bullied the natives into submission while bringing settlers from Tigray and arming them with guns providing ammunition ranging from 220 to 320 rounds for each new settler. <laughs> Dr. Sisai Misgano, a World Guide case investigator, says, After TPLF came, one may ask what happened to the communities that live there. It forced them to leave their land, made some disappear without a trace, or even killed them in the open. And for those that survived the oppression, TPLF made sure that they remained impoverished. This is what TPLF did. Therefore, if we look back and see what happened to these people, they used to be so rich, but now either they were murdered or are living in extreme poverty without being able to afford a normal life. A local witness states, in 1991, TPLF started redistributing the land of Walkait, Agade, Alamt, and Humara. They first gave the land to the TPLF army members and drove the natives out of their land. The displaced natives attempted farming on uncultivated land by the river. Even then, TPLF continued to harass and levy unreasonable taxes simply to drive the natives out of Wolkait. TPLF distributed two hectare acres of land for each TPLF army member, but left the people of Wolkait, Agade, Talamt, and Humara without any land. As a result, our lives have become miserable. <laughs> Colonel Demek Azodu also states, starting from 1993, TPLF renamed a place called Nate, which is in the Dancha area, to division, and settled over 6,000 ex-TPLF army members. Before they were settled, they were warned that in order to stay in the settlement, they must kidnap and kill the native Wolkites. Then the native farmers were forced to leave the area. Following that, starting in 1994, they began settling other Tigrayans. If you saw it when you came from Shirado Tigray and crossed the Tekeze, they renamed every place and settled Tigrayans on it. When they did this, it was by displacing the natives. When the natives left by force, they had to leave their farming equipment because they were told they don't deserve to keep any property. <laughs> Dr. Sisai Misgana also states, The first thing TPLF did when it started the invasion was to get rid of the influential people and those who asked any questions regarding it. By forcing the rest of the community, they have caused over 500,000 native Wolkite slash Tagade residents to leave and migrate to other parts of Ethiopia or even other countries. Those who did not leave had to face being kidnapped, being murdered, or live in a state of complete subordination without any property. TPLF went even further and committed several types of crimes in order to convert the area and to make it similar to other Tigray regions. Amaras were displaced from their farms, their properties were looted, and people were individually tortured. Due to the extreme hardship, most victims have been living in poverty and are miserable. Dr. Sisai Misgana also states, The first thing TPLF did when it started the invasion was to get rid of the influential people and those who asked any questions regarding it. By forcing the rest of the community, they have caused over 500,000 native Wolkite slash Tagade residents to leave and migrate to other parts of Ethiopia or even other countries. 
those who did not leave had to face being kidnapped, being murdered, or live in a state of complete subordination without any property. TPLF went even further and committed several types of crimes in order to convert the area and to make it similar to other Tigray regions. <laughs> By looking at a map presented in 1989 by the Ethiopian Broadcasting Corporation, we can see the shaded parts show the land between the Takaze and the Sudan border that was taken by TPLF. That land used to be part of the Gondar province, but TPLF redrew the map so that Abdi Ramitz, Walk Ait, Mansan Fia, and others are included as part of Tigray. The TPLF's invasion since 1991 has intensified the land grab and displacement of Amaras. According to an ex-TPLF member, Makonin Zalalo, over half a million Amaras were forced out of their native land and left the area. They took the land which was given to me by the Derg regime in 1975. Now I have no land. In addition, they took all of my property. All this happened to me just because I am Amhara. A displaced local resident states, places such as Turkan, Aidola, Shigril, Mailemen, Ruasa, Waldaab, Befutsum, Adris, and Zarawit were all given to Tigray settlers. In addition to our farmland, they gave them our homes. The leftover land was also taken to be used for feeding their cattle. <laughs> More than 500,000 Tigrayans were settled here in Walkait and the adjacent areas. They removed the Amara from Walkait. This was an atrocity that displaced more than half a million Amaras from their ancestral birthplace. To make room for the 500,000 Tigrayans, the Amaras had to be removed and displaced by Tigrayans. <laughs> As per Makonin Zalilo's report, in the past 27 years when the TPLF government had been in power, they brought Tigrayans and settled them on the ancestral land of the Amaras, uprooting the Amaras completely. What you currently find to be registered landowners are the half a million new Tigrayan settlers brought by the TPLF government from central Tigray. <laughs> Having their land confiscated, the indigenous farmers couldn't tend their livestock for the lack of grazing land. Their lives became a living hell. Living in Wolkait turned out to be an endless walk through a desert. A local priest explains, Our wide expanse of land was taken for development by TPLF. Some of it was given to the group called Division. They told us not to cross those lands. If any of our cattle cross to those plots of lands, we will be sighted. Yet they can bring their cattle as they please and graze anywhere on our land. Adancha resident explains, For Amara people, they will put a heavy land use tax so no one can work. If the taxes that one used to pay was 200,000, they will raise it to 700,000. When one complains, they will drag the case in about three years, they will demand 2.1 million, which no one can pay. Later, they confiscate the land, bring someone from Tigray, and give that land to them for free. Traditionally, the Walkait people from the highlands came to the lowlands and used to farm the lowlands a lot. TPLF made a rule that no one can go to the lowlands from Walkait, 
they removed those farmers, brought people from Tigray, and gave them those lands. Their legal farmlands? Yes. For example, at a place called Shalala, a man named Ato Yirsao Demesis had owned 800 hectare acres of land since the 1950s, and he was paying taxes for 52 years. Tipelov confiscated his land and sent him away. They brought people from Tigray and gave that land to those people for free. His former land is still there. The Walkait Tagade and Tallamt people suffered greatly under TPLF. TPLF inflicted more pain and suffering than a foreign invading force could have inflicted. In his own native land and property, he was forced to be a refugee. Life became a walk on a string of death. The Walkait resident explains, The land we used to farm was taken away and given to the Tigrayan settlers. We became landless. Now we live in a rented place in Dansha. Even if you want to rent and farm, the fact that our ID says that we are from Walkait results in us being mistreated. We were always worried and fearful about the mistreatment that we were facing. We have faced a lot of injustices and atrocities. <laughs> Former soldier explains, The land grab took place and we were not allowed to move past our road. We didn't have a place to take our livestock. We were left with a small piece of land for subsistence farming, which we barely survive on. There are a lot of problems. <laughs> Atobayu Bazab explains, In Walkait, TPLF forced out the natives. Isn't this a violation of human rights? Is this the right of Ethiopians? If you don't fight this, when are you going to fight as an Ethiopian? What worse thing did the invading Italian forces do? Italy didn't say move out of your land. They just said we would like to colonize you. TPLF said move out of your ancestral land. Where can one go from his ancestral place? Couldn't this be a reason for hatred? Couldn't this be a cause for war? The land grab across the Takeze River was distributed for the supporters of TPLF from Tigray and for their families. Ways to remove the Walk-Eyed people was by labeling them as feudal and calling them anti-TPLF. They took their land by force and redistributed it to the people that TPLF liked. TPLF weakened the local people's economy, took away their political participation, and silenced them. That was one way of carrying out the land grab by TPLF. The project Atozalalem Mangastu, a federal police deputy commissioner, states, The projects TPLF works on sometimes looks at one issue and sometimes at more issues, one of them being resource mobilization and utilization. If you go to the Beni Shangu region, you'll see resources like gold and other mineral resources. When you come here to Walkait, you'll find vast fertile land for farming. When there are a lot of resources and riches, TPLF comes with projects supported with huge finance and they remove the people from their ancestral land by killing and forcefully removing their native people and taking it as their own. The killings, like this one, happen to fulfill their big project of stealing resources. Generally speaking, the land grab is one of the ways stealing resources and riches consolidated their power and enriched themselves. <laughs> The land that TPLF forcefully took away from the Amara people of Walkait, Tagaret, Alamt, and Humara is the place that I am standing at. This area is vast and fertile land. TPLF took over this land forcefully from Amara natives for their own use and gave it to the people who came from Tigray. TPLF's crimes and injustices included religious institutions. Citizens who live in Walkait, Alam, Tagade, Dansha, and Humara 
were having a hard time worshipping their religion. Religious places were influenced by TPLF politics. A local priest states, the other thing that TPLF did was, when we are praying, we prostrate for St. Mary's icons that are in Ethiopia, Egypt, Rome, and Syria. TPLS people would come and say that you have to get rid of Ethiopia and replace it with Tigray. We responded that we mentioned Egypt, Rome, and Syria, so why not Ethiopia? And they said Ethiopia should be removed from the prayers and replaced with Tigray. <laughs> TPLF thinks getting rid of Amaringa, the national language from Wolkait, would be the only basis for Amara's existence. Thus, the solution was to get rid of Amaringa and remove it from religious services. To extinguish Amharic, every church was forced to use the Tigringa language only. Everything is in Tigringa, so we had to go back home from church without finishing the service. They would say, why don't you wait until all the services are completed? We don't understand the Tigringa language, so we had to leave the religious service early. A local priest states, we were forced to teach in Tigringa. We were to practice Tigringa and read in Tigringa, but people do not understand it. Our people know Amaringa. They brought us the Tigrinya Bible and issued that all Wolkite people must be taught in Tigrinya. We were forced to teach everything in Tigrinya. I told them that in Wolkite, the people speak Amaringa. And they said, you in Wolkite and Raya say this. We want you guys to leave the land. This land is Tigray's now. Edancha priest states being forced by TPLF to use Tigrinya in church made us hate the Tigrinya language. The church doesn't care about languages. The church believes that all languages equally belong to it. But we have to serve with the language of the choice of the people. What the people can understand is what we should have been teaching it. At church, they shame you, they label you names. People who live around here are put down and have been affected morally. They have killed their hope. They are afraid of name calling. There are times where people do not come to church at all. There was a heavy influence. We passed through a lot of problems. A Muslim Dansha resident states, During TPLF, there was no freedom of speaking the language of your choice. They say you can speak your language, but in practice, Tigrinya was favored. They wanted you to only speak Tigrinya. The Islam religion is written in Arabic. If the dominant religion was Islam, they would have asked us to do service in Tigrinya. The Amara identity in Walkai Alamt Humara and Tagade was considered a crime. The sword sheathed by TPLF to destroy Amara reached across all these areas. The Dansha priest states, if you say I am an Amara or you sing an Amaringa, a lot of people have been imprisoned in Humara for saying such things. We were afraid that they would be executed. They were too young to be in prison. TPLF has worked a lot to weaken the people's psychology. A Muslim Dansha resident says, because we are Amaras from Walkait or Tagade, we have suffered a lot. We didn't have any rights. We were considered second-class citizens. They won't let us work. Whether in religion or in business, we have dealt with a lot of problems. A local resident states, We were told that from now on, if you speak Amaringa, you will be punished. We passed through a time where kids were expelled from school and were beaten or other injustices were done to them for speaking Amaringa. We were forced to identify ourselves as Tigrayan. 
we were not allowed to sing or listen to Amarinya music. The other injustice that TPLF has done to the Walkite and Tagade people was TPLF's cultural invasion. The cultural background of the society in these areas is with the Amara people from Gondar. In weddings, burials, and other ceremonies, the culture of these areas is very similar to Gondar. But TPLF forced the people to have only Tigrinya music during weddings. <laughs> TPLF used schools as the main tool to cleanse the Amara people from Walkait and Tagade. Schools where knowledge is given and the future generation is built were instead used to teach about ethnicity and tribalism. At their young age, there was a huge effort to make them lose their identity. TPLF wrote propaganda and hatred in the brains of youngsters. They teach our kids songs about Tigray only. They tell them not to sing about the Ethiopian national anthem, which is called Citizenship Pride. If they sing about Citizenship Pride, they told them to stop that and instead sing about Tigray. If the kids cannot sing about Tigray, their parents would be summoned to the school. They tell their parents, if your kid doesn't know how to sing about Tigray, you will be imprisoned or killed. The Dancha priest states, people have natural rights such as freedom. There are two main things, democratic rights and human rights. You should wear whatever you want to wear. If you wear a t-shirt with Prime Minister Abi's picture, you are not allowed to get into school. You have to go back home. Your shirt will be torn. If your notebook has a picture of Abi, that will also be torn. The kid will be beaten and sent home. You will be insulted as chauvinist or narrow-minded. To force the people of Walkait, Tagade, Talamt, and Humara into another identity, by changing Amarinya names and social norms, the hate that has been there for years is flowing like a stream under TPLF's feet. A Dansha resident states, Let alone to say I am an Amara, if you have an Amarinya name, you will not be treated equally in any offices. If you go to any office and speak Amarinya, the office is not going to serve you and will not do anything for you. <laughs> A local resident states, if you sing slash dance in Amaringa, it is considered a crime. When they brought new settlers, they changed the name of places from Amaringa to Tigrinya. They changed Marhoha to Hagar Salam. They changed Indat Arash to Wahedet. And they changed Zero Awit to Mawahine. A former soldier states, they have changed our language too. Amaringa is different from Tigrinya. They say Lachimmi, we say Lam for a cow. When a guy said lam for a cow, they were telling him not to speak Amarinya. They asked, why are you calling the cow lam? Why don't you say lachimni? Atobayu Bazab states again, they were saying any Amarinya speaking person is not allowed to live in Walkait. How could this be? Can anybody tell you that you are not allowed to speak your own language in your own land? In your own land? Amarinya is something to be proud of. One of the languages that has their own alphabet is Amarinya. You can't speak and write in Amarinya? This is what TPLF's democratic rights are. <laughs> TPLF has had a heavy influence on social life. Wearing Gondar's customary clothes of traditional Jano and having an Ethiopian flag were not allowed. One of the customs in the area is to have an Ethiopian flag during burial processions. But TPLF outlawed having the flag during such ceremonies. This kind of influence was practiced during TPLF's time. 
During a burial procession, there is shillala and fukara in Amara culture as a process of grieving for one's loss. But the Amara people, especially from Armachoho, Tagare, and other surrounding areas, were not allowed to practice their culture. The reason being, they said, was that it was different from Tigrayan culture. The main reason is to influence the identity of the people and to force the people to be Tigrayan. The cultural wealth of the Amara has been eradicated for Tigrayan supremacy. Dansha and Humara's businesses were totally controlled by the Tigrayans. Free business activity was as far away as the sky. A local resident states, the tax for Amara businesses was levied at a higher rate compared to Tigrayan businesses. I have worked as a trade association official. They told me to be a TPLF member or else I can't be an official. I refuse to be a TPLF member. I was also arguing for fair taxation for businesses. Finally, I was stopped from being an official of the trade union, even though the traders had elected me. They told me that you are not needed here, as you are from the Amara ethnic group. A Muslim Dancha resident states, when you get your business license, they will ask you where you are from and your ethnicity. If you are Amara, they will try to stop you from starting a business. If you are Tigrayan, the tax levied will be from 300 to 500 bir, while if you are Amara, from 20,000 to 100,000 bir. The main goal for this happening is to get rid of Amara from this land. To restrict the freedom of the youth, TPLF passed new local laws. The youth was forced to ignore its Amara identity and to have very low self-esteem. A local resident explains, TPLF caused unbearable difficulty for the youth. It forced the youth to submit to the system by creating economic and psychological hardships. Those who chose not to live under absolute domination migrated out of the area. Others who tried to resist ended up arrested or dead. The rest had to live under extreme suffering and subordination. A local resident explains, wearing a shirt that TPLF doesn't agree with is a cause for being beaten up or arrested. Several young boys were spanked with their shirts off and poured water on them just for claiming to be Amara. When I asked why they poured water on them while spanking them, they said it is to make them feel the pain. One of my young relatives has lost all his five fingers as a result. Ato Kasai, who was displaced by TPLF, explains, The TPLF is extremely cruel and tortures people worse than wild animals. They torture you by pulling fingernails out, taking eyes out, hanging water bottles on men's genitalia, by extreme beating, demoralizing, and eventually killing the individual. <laughs> Withstanding all types of harassment, torture, and killing, some residents continued the resistance movement to restore their Amara identity. As a result, several of them stayed in jail permanently. A local resident, Atoretta Gabriyasu, states, Some remain jailed here, some jailed in Gondar, and some went to a jail called Kalinto near Addis Ababa. Others were jailed in Makale Tigray. Those in Mekala faced all types of torture unless they denied their Amara identity and identified themselves as Tigrayan. Some men have become infertile as a result of extreme torture and castration. Women were raped and faced all types of sexual torture as well.
አሁን በግልጽ ልገልጻቸው ይችላሉ ከጓደኞቻችን ጋር ታፍሮ የነበር እና አስቻለው አስቻለው እንዳይወልድ ነው ተደርጎ የነበር ያ ጀግናው የተገደለው ማለት እንዳይወልድ አድርጎ የሚመስል ሲያት ብልት ያባላሹበት ግዜ ነው የነበረበት ውሃት ማለት አቶ መላኩ ራንደ who was tortured in jail recalls what happened to me in kalinto when i told them that i am amara is something so gruesome which i cannot say in public most of us have faced physical and mental suffering which are beyond explanation my gelsem gifne yedersebna ato aschalo abraha who was arrested and tortured states my friend and i are from the balasa area in gonder we were arrested in january 2016 at a place called saturday market in gonder they jailed us in addisaba at maekalawi jail by transporting us through humara and into tigray while jailed we were constantly harassed and tortured they insulted and demoralized us by saying how can a donkey rule a country a donkey only knows how to feed itself from a grassland can you push this wall tplf is like this wall you cannot push it can you ski gifaw higum huwahat malat yen tanas gifaw higum be gifaw ski yifarsa ha huwahat he malat Their body was slashed like old cloth and completely damaged. They faced immense suffering that is disturbing to any listener. Atoas Chalu states, they used to force us to lie down on an asphalt road with our clothes off. Then they would splash us with cold water while spanking us just because we said we are Amara. They smashed my head to the wall and as a result, I was unconscious for 3 days. I had to be fed by others since I was unable to drink or eat by myself. They also used to tie our hands on top of a bar and hung bottles full of water attached to our testicles. There is no type of torture they did not do to us. Now, one of my eyes is legally blind and so far I did not get medical treatment since I cannot afford it. Also, I have a mental condition that was manifested due to the torture where I am in. an unstable emotional state bahwat yederese bin kinger andayne yaw anday sara honal hkemna miska honal agenyom hkemna mine behed aqma aqma ala agenyom bota mala alneberenyi miska zare eh kaftetenya demo ya amuro tigira adso binya awun kaftetenya ya amuro tigira adso binya yalu hore mi kohone የጨራሽ ትግስት እንትን አሞሬ ሌላ ነገር ነርብ ነገር ነው የሚሆነው በጣም ያምሮ ችግር አድርሰው ብኛ The continuation of the unbearable suffering by TPLF resulted in more resistance and struggle for freedom when its fall from power became near TPLF kidnapped Amara farmers from Humara and took them away በሁማራ የሚገኙ አሞሮችን አፍ ነው ወሰደ I heard that my father was one of the freedom fighters he was a rich farmer and investor both my father and husband used to be harassed insulted and ridiculed by the local administrators the district officers and higher level authorities for speaking and listening to amharic music and also for claiming to be amhara so saat hulet saat yemiqom bet yemiche fetchefum betoka Ato Torone Lemlem states, TPLF has been oppressing and exploiting us since day one. They took over the area by force, took all our land and properties, and removed the historical boundary. We have been living in constant suffering. They said you cannot sleep while we stand all night. They brought my husband home, hitting him first on his forehead with a gun saddle. They then tied his hands behind his back. These young TPLF members were beating him up with everything they had until he became completely exhausted. They kept shouting You Amhara supporters will lose all your belongings. We will have it all. After taking my husband, they came and took my father Monday night in the dark. Tuesday morning, we went to the nearest jail and asked, but were told they were not there. 
On Wednesday, we went around to every jail in town and the surrounding area and asked for them, but no jail admitted of having them. Ato Turuna also states, they forced us to accept that we are Tigrayan instead of Amara. We had nowhere to go. We were helpless. <laughs> Suffering from absolute brutality and cruelty, the Humara Amara community was forced into submission after the killing and displacing of their relatives and well-known heroes. When people ask for the whereabouts of some of the jailed, saying that someone has seen them, the jailers ask, who are they? When the names such as Amara Turuna, Tsahaye Atalai, Jamal Tajna from Kaftia area, Awak Azium from Walkait, and several others are mentioned. First, they were not willing to reveal who they are, but after they told them that they just wanted to see their body, even if they're dead, they took them to an area where their dead bodies were scattered. The remains of my father and husband were found there among six other bodies. While transporting them for killing, some eyewitnesses saw that they were throwing them out of a car, loading them back with their hands tied, beating and torturing every part of their body. I heard that my father's head was swollen and bleeding from the beating. My husband was also soaked with his own blood from repeated torture. While being tortured on the way to the killing field, they were also without food and drink until they finally killed them. Ato Turuna reflects on his son. My son knew only hard work, never harmed anyone. They killed him just for being Amara. He was like a father and mother to me. Since my wife was also sick, he was our only help. No one should experience what my family and I went through. The TPLF people used to ask the locals, why do you claim that Walkayat and Tsagari belongs to Amhara? Why do you claim to be Amhara? My father used to tell me that when they came to our area for the first time, they killed all the famous noble natives who had the titles such as Dajazmach, Kenyazmach, and Grazmach in the area. And now, just before they lost the war and left the area, they killed my husband and my father. The depth of brutality by TPLF did not even end as it was dying as an organization. When retreating from military defeat, TPLF showed its blind hatred for the Amara people in Maikadra by massacring them in an unparalleled cruelty in the history of Ethiopia. The brutality inflicted on me is undeniable. The TPLF killing squad arrived and beat me. They hit me with a machete. They also cracked my head. I didn't know why they hit me. My whole body was covered in blood. They left me because they thought I was dead. If they thought I was breathing, they would have killed me with no hesitation. Look, my head is full of stab wounds. Here he stabbed me in three or four places with a knife. They left me there because they thought that I was dead. My cadre has exposed the brutal conspiracy of the TPLF. It has shown that the TPLF is a cruel, inhumane group. As the people that TPLF massacred are innocent citizens who had no political involvement. They were regular people, daily laborers who came to the area in search of livelihood. It's a continued manifestation of the atrocities TPLF committed throughout its tenure. This is a desperate act of a hopeless organization counting its last days. 
At my Kadra, the TPLF showed us the depth of its brutality, barbaric identity, and its final desperate animalistic response as the end of its existence fastly approaches. So, Tarlai Cedars, a meader gonak. Selezi, Hoatem, Tarlai and a better besatan, Gina Baron, Aramania, and the image of Rashad Reja, my Kadra Layasa in Vienna Maso. As a result of TPLF's bloodless ethnic centric brutality, innocent civilians were slaughtered like lamb during the massacre of Maikadra. Their blood was shed in public with reckless disregard for their humanity. <laughs> They cut us down like animals. Normally, you will be afraid to kill the animal you raised. When we kill animals for food, we ask for the word of God for his divine permission. Even animals are revered. But these people are different. We know them. We live together. We ate together. At that time, I did not expect them to be cruel and do what they did to me. This is beyond the imagination of a human being, something that has never been seen or heard of. But I'm... A government official explains, it's very emotional and heartbreaking. The massacre of civilians, especially innocent civilians, is unbearable. This appears to be premeditated and a planned act. It is heartbreaking to hear about the killing of innocent civilians in this way. I've never seen such a story in my life. It's a sad story. This is not a coincidence or accidental, but a planned project. In many places in Ethiopia, we have repeatedly stated that such atrocities were carried out by the TPLF's direct orders. That was repeated here again. The unspoken heinous brutality speaks volumes about the fact that TPLF is a group obsessed with dark desires. Young children were killed in this horrific massacre. They came and beat him. They beat him as he sat in the house and asked him to get out. When he got out, they killed him. After killing him, they threw his body into the fire. They killed Abitz, a guy, and burned him there. One of our neighbors was beaten when she tried to save him. Her hands were badly hurt. One of her hands bent the wrong way from the beating. The man was burned. They burned his body. <laughs> The government official also explains, not only the Ethiopian people, but we also want the international community to be aware of this horrific act. Contrary to what TPLF claims, this is purely the massacre of innocent civilians in front of their homes by the TPLF's trained militia called Samre. The overwhelming evidence we collected, the story of the survivors, the testimony of the victims' families, Neighbors and even longtime Tigrayan residents in Maikadra have all testified about this undeniable brutality. <laughs> Maikadra was engulfed in the flames of evil. Anyone identified as Amara was isolated and brutally killed. Their noble bodies were thrown into the fire. <laughs> It's Awitz Agai. The first one to be burned was Awitz Agai. The place is called Gun Safar. So they burned the house to the ground and they threw his corpse into the fire. This is to destroy the race. This is done to eliminate the Amhara race. But you came in 1975 during the Derg regime? Yes, I came in 1975 during the Derg era. TPLF killed my children's father also. So TPLF killed your brother and killed your husband. They have also taken your land. The TPLF has done all of this? Yes, all this has happened. The injustice committed on me is bondless. I am currently in my Kadra in an area called Gumb Sefer. 
In this location, ethnic Amaras were massacred and their homes and property were confiscated. Overall, what I saw in my cadre is deeply heartbreaking. Innocent civilians lost their lives. Their property was destroyed. Their sanctified corpse were denigrated and burnt. All this happened to us because we are Amhara. Our church is the same with the people that killed us. We live together. We ate together. We have no difference. They killed us because we are Amhara. One of the TPLF men named Tesfa Kiros was bragging that he was going to destroy us. He told us we are remnants of the Derg. Tesfa Kiros was openly threatening that he alone is sufficient to kill us all without needing any support. <laughs> The massacre unleashed on us is because we are Amharas. It is because of our Amhara identity. The TPLF officials used to threaten us. They were saying that Amhara will not live with them. But we believe that it is our homeland, our ancestral place. The government official explained, the massacre committed at Maikadra is the same as what happened in Rwanda. It was ethnic cleansing. Every citizen, regardless of ethnicity, has the right to live in Ethiopia with respect and dignity. The right to freedom of movement is guaranteed by the constitution. The injustice and atrocities that happened here is wrong and beyond comprehension. He further says, the number of people who lost their lives in the Maikadra genocide is increasing day by day. An investigation by the Human Rights Commission confirmed that more than 1,000 civilians had been killed. More than 600 died in one day, with corpses on the ground everywhere. The government official also explains, I say the number of people killed is more than the report of the World Humanitarian Commission. The issue is not the 600 number. The number is much higher. I have now heard that various bodies are being found in multiple places. There were bodies that you have seen from the places you were reporting genocide. Corpses are found in Barakat, along the banks of the river and in the bushes. The current situation shows that the total number of people killed will be much higher. <laughs> We are now in the town of Maikadra, where the massacred Amaras are buried. It is a site of many burials. Even if the total count of the genocide victims is not known yet, it is clear a large number of people were massacred. Since February of 1975, the TPLF has been campaigning against the Amara and portraying the Amara people as its historical enemy. But the horrific massacre of innocent people in Maikadra is the ultimate manifestation of the depth of the brutality of the TPLF and will be forever remembered. <laughs> TPLF has dreamed for years of eliminating the Amara from the face of the earth and has displaced hundreds of thousands of Amaras from their native land. Walkite Amaras have endured unimaginable suffering for countless years while holding high their indomitable aspiration for justice. My son fell here. He died here, but his body was never found. The whereabouts of his body is unknown. I had only one child. I lost my child. I lost my child and here I am. I don't want to live. This is not living. I can't get over this. I am alone and I will live a life of misery and sorrow until the end of my time.